Hello everyone. I hope you are all keeping well. Thank you so much to all the subscribers. Please I am asking everyone watching this video and is not subscribed to kindly subscribe. Thank you and much appreciation. Now let us go to the real stuff that matters. Today it is all about the diplomatic community. This is the community that is supposed to be the cream of the nations they represent. Their character, integrity, trust and respect is expected to be impeccable. Diplomats are expected to handle stressful and difficult situations calmly and adapt quickly to changing situations. Diplomats are expected to have good judgment and high integrity and outstanding analytical skills. However, when one or two diplomats get it wrong, the community is in check. The dark, heavy cloud of sheer embarrassment quickly becomes overwhelming. Two of Uganda's most senior diplomats have been recalled from their foreign assignments following diplomatic incidents. It is so unfortunate indeed. Nonetheless, being recalled back has the same connotation like a bad product or produce from the supermarket or grocery store being recalled due to some defect. What a devastating thought. Uganda's Consul General to the United Arab Emirates, UAE, Ambassador Henry Mayega, along with other consulate officials, have been recalled to Uganda. This action was taken due to an investigation into allegations that gambling machines were privately procured and operated within the Ugandan consulate in Dubai. This is quite extraordinary, and there must be some disquiet in all the embassies and high commissions around the world, because it is so off the wall. Then, there's Joy Ruthaching based in Canada. Miss Joy Ruthaching has been deported from Canada for unrefined behavior. Canada used the word uncouth behavior. On the video, you will be able to see a taste of what may transpired. It is also alleged that Miss Aching was not actively working in the mission and was not attending meetings. Also, her children were attracted to wrongdoing and involved in criminal activities. This is where micromanagement becomes essential. This is where openness, trust and transparency becomes a requirement. What are the implications of deportation of Ugandan top diplomats? Will it affect the way other countries view Uganda? Please share your thoughts in the comment section. It will help generate a conversation and exchange of ideas, along with decision-making. Let us carry on. The deportations have sparked concerns about the conduct of Uganda's representatives abroad and the implications for the country's diplomatic relations. The State Minister for Foreign Affairs, Mr. Okello Oriam, confirmed that the recall is part of the ongoing investigation to identify the officials involved. The state minister emphasized that this recall is not an expulsion but a procedural move to facilitate the inquiry. If the officials are found guilty, they will not return to their positions. If innocent, they will be reinstated. Despite the scandal, Mr. Okello Oriem reassured that Uganda's relationship with Dubai remains strong and unaffected by these events. The specific allegations against the Ugandan officials involve the unauthorized procurement and operation of gambling machines within the Ugandan consulate in Dubai. This is truly bold. These machines were allegedly used for private gambling activities, which is a serious breach of conduct for diplomatic staff to execute. Let us take a listen to the video. The deportations have sparked concerns over the conduct of Uganda's representatives abroad and the implications for the country's diplomatic relations and indeed the country's image. Take a listen. Henry Maika, Uganda's deputy ambassador to the UAE and consular general and staff at the consulate has been recalled back to Uganda following accusations of running a casino within the consulate premises. According to experts, such activities starkly violate the international norms that govern diplomatic conduct. <laughs> Simultaneously, Joy Rutha Ching, Uganda's ambassador to Canada, has been declared personal non grata by the Canadian government and is expected to return to Uganda a few hours from now. <laughs> Aching's expulsion comes at the heels of allegations that she engaged in partisan political activities while on duty, a serious breach of diplomatic protocol. Your responsibility is to represent your, your country, to make friends for your country, to do business for your country, to give a good image for your country. Under the Vienna Convention, diplomats are required to maintain neutrality and abstain from involvement in the domestic politics of their host countries. You must adhere to the rules, the international rules of diplomacy. You must also adhere to the rules of the country. Uh, consulates or embassies are not private. Uh, you know, they, they have, they carry a diplomatic immunity and that means that uh, you know they are recognized as important institutions in fact that is uganda 
in this case in Canada, in this case in the uh, UAE, UAE. This development have prompted reactions from various quarters. Mwadan Kunyenji, Uganda's Shadow Minister for Foreign Affairs, voices concern over the apparent decline in diplomatic decorum. A consulate or any diplomatic premise cannot be used for business be it legitimate or illegitimate, but whatsoever, it can't be used for business. As reported for the, our consulate in UAE, a consulate can't be used for any other purpose apart from diplomatic work. And diplomatic work is well regulated by the international agreed uh, conventions and statutes. Uh, they are uh, enabled by local and domestic, domestic laws. Our laws in Uganda can't allow either and, our law, and the laws of UAE, UAE can't allow and equal international law. The recall of these two envoys may be the first steps in what could be a broader view of Uganda's diplomatic appointments. Uganda now finds itself at a crossroads where the integrity of its diplomatic front must be upheld to preserve its standing in the international community. We do have uh, Uganda's ambassador to the UAE on uh, call for us. Um, ambassador, thank you so much uh, for joining us this evening. You are in charge of uh, uh, the mission, and this happened under your watch. Did you or did you not know that this was going on under your very own eyes? Uh, thank you, first of all, for having me here. Zaki Wan Mechibedi is my name, Ambassador of Uganda to the United Arab Emirates. Uh, uh, the issue uh, at hand happened at uh, the consulate in uh, Dubai, and investigations are ongoing. Uh, technically, how the consulate relates with the embassy is that uh, the consulate offers consular services. So the relationship between the embassy and the consulate technically is on policy and uh, rules and procedures. However, when it comes to day-to-day -day running of uh, the consulate, that is uh, overseen by the management, the top management at the consulate. Uh, but uh, for the case, for what is now under investigation, uh, we are waiting for the report to get the facts of uh, what happened. But uh, as of now, back to your question, that uh, was, did this happen under my watch? Uh, I would like to tell you that uh, the embassy is in Abu Dhabi, where the capital is for the United Arab Emirates, and the consulate is in Dubai. So on a day-to-day -day running of the consulate, this is uh, basically under the management of the consulate. But uh, I'm not now judging that whether the uh, UEFA was concerned is uh, this is the right to tell who was responsible and who was not responsible because uh, the investigations are ongoing and uh, we expect them to be concluded uh, by the end of this month. And once the investigations are concluded at the end of this month, appropriate action would be taken by government. Uh, Ambassador, thank you for, for, so much for your answer. It, it, it does sound a very diplomatic answer to the question I asked. Uh, but, but let me go again. Uh, investigations are ongoing, but we hear people have been recalled and there are plans to replace them. Won't this jeopardize investigations and shouldn't it be prudent to wait until the investigations are done and that report and, and, and then we have people replaced? Uh, once, because the investigations are ongoing and it is suspected that it happened at the consulate, so it was to the wisdom of the Minister of Foreign Affairs to recall the diplomats and the staff at the consulate not to interfere with the investigations, so that the investigation is done free and uh, without any interference. So, but uh, to, I think what a, a viewer would like to know is that with this recall that has happened, will it affect the services or the work of the consulate? The answer is not. The answer is not because uh, when the consulate general is leaving, he has to hand over to the head of mission procedurally, and this is what has been done. And, uh, and since this has been done, 
we've uh, made, put in place systems to ensure that the services uh, which are called like uh, consular services that uh, the consulate offers to our nationals in Dubai for this case are not interfered with. We are offering the services and uh, Foreign Affairs is uh, planning to post a new consul general and this is expected uh, in the next three to four weeks. The investigation aims to determine who was responsible for bringing these machines into the consulate and operating them. If the officials are found guilty, they could face disciplinary actions, including dismissal from their positions. The investigation process into the allegations against the Ugandan diplomats involves key steps. The first step was recalling the implicated officials back to Uganda. This allows the, the investigation to proceed without interference and ensures that the officials are available for questioning. The second process is the formation of an investigative committee. This committee is typically formed to handle the investigation. This committee is responsible for gathering evidence, interviewing witnesses, and reviewing any relevant documents or records. The third step is the evidence collection. The committee will collect all available evidence related to the allegations. This includes any documentation of the procurement and operation of the gambling machines, financial records, and any communications that might shed light on the situation. The fourth step involves interviews and testimonies. The officials involved, as well as any other relevant personnel, will be interviewed. Their testimonies will be crucial in understanding the extent of the misconduct and identifying those responsible. The fifth step is the analysis and reporting. Once all evidence is collected and interviews are collected, the committee will analyze the findings. They will compile a report detailing their conclusions and recommendations for any disciplinary actions. The sixth step is the disciplinary actions. Based on the findings, appropriate disciplinary actions will be taken. If the officials are found guilty, they could face penalties ranging from reprimands to dismissal from their positions. If they are found innocent, they will be reinstated. The seventh step is transparency and communication. Throughout the process, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs will likely keep the public informed about the progress and outcomes of the investigation to maintain transparency and trust, assuming all the above steps are followed. This thorough process ensures that the investigation is fair and comprehensive, addressing all aspects of the allegations. It is so unfortunate to see Uganda's international intellectuals being recalled back like a bad produce from the supermarket. However, the failure to observe basic laws and human rights in a foreign country is so devastating. Why would a diplomat open a business in a foreign host state, and never mind using the embassy premises? Why would a senior diplomat go bananas, get excited, or act crazy on the street? It makes one question what methodology is used for selecting individuals into the diplomatic pool. Is it political or is it on merit? I hope it is on merit. That's all folks. I wish you all a great weekend. For those in England, enjoy the bank holiday break.